recording. All right, ladies, thank you so much for joining us at Wisdom's Table, grabbing a seat at Wisdom's Table. I like to run with the metaphor a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Wisdom's Table, women's Bible study. We meet every Wednesday. Ooh, my my uh, cords are falling. Anyway, we meet every Wednesday at mm -hmm. 6 p.m. Pacific time, 9 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, and um, tonight we'll be continuing on our subject, our series on how wise women pray with the subtitle of Lord teach us how to make our prayers count. So first, uh, as always, we want to um, invite the Lord into our study and our time together and our time of fellowship. So let's all join together in prayer. Father, thank you so much for just being our father, for being our Lord, for being our daddy, just being there in our lives. Thank you so much for sending your only begotten son, Jesus, who um, saves us from our sins. Lord, we invite you into this, uh, into this study together. Um, we invite you into the topic. We thank you so much, Lord, that your word, your scriptures, the holy, the holy scriptures are profitable for every area of life and, and godliness. And um, just as Christian women, we want to grow in wisdom. We ask you, Father, with, with regard to the subject of prayer and, and for every area of our Christian life, in our day-to-day, -day, in our homes, our relationships, and uh, our jobs, wherever you call us to serve, wherever you call us to work, that you, we just thank you and invite you in and, and just bless our efforts to grow in wisdom, to grow in the knowledge of you, Father. Bless our time together in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen. amen. All right. So uh, we are, as I said, we're on the series, Lord, teach us how to make our prayers count. Uh, hi uh, to Loretta. We'll say hi as soon as her uh, audio um, connects. And it's important to me that I, inter I interrupt myself every time somebody comes in. I don't have a problem with people not being here right at 6 or 6.05. I'm like, hey, my goal, my, my job, I believe, is like if you come in with five minutes left at the Bible study, Lord, may that person still get uh, receive something that's like a gem for them in that five in that five minutes so uh, that's just you know never feel like you can you can't if you're not here right at six or or within the first five or ten minutes that's fine join in at any time um, because um, we're just glad that that each I'm glad that everyone is here um, and I believe that the word of God is, is rich enough that whether it's an hour, 60 minutes or five minutes or one minute, you, you will get something out of uh, participating in, in pulling up a chair. So um, is Loretta there? Hi, Loretta. Hello, everybody. Hi, Hi Loretta. Great. Hello. Uh, so in this, the, yes, Yvette. Um, I don't want to be interrupting while you're talking. So since I got this cough, uh huh. I was going to ask that you put me on mute. Yes, I will do that. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Yvette. I'm praying mm -hmm. for you. Lord, we Thank just you. lift Yvette up to you and ask you, Father, yes. just touch her, um, touch her and protect her physically and just uh, mm -hmm. heal her according to your perfect will, Father, and bring her comfort and peace of mind as well. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Um, so this series, in this series, just kind of like a review, uh, we're talking about, uh, so far, we've talked about the purposes of prayer, attitudes of prayer, closely related to attitude of prayer is posture of prayer. So it's a posture of the heart, as well as the posture of, you know, your body. Do you bow? Do you not bow? Do you close your eyes? You know, all of those. We talked about that last week. Tonight, we're going to talk about content of prayer. Um, and in content, we're talking about the elements of, of prayer, like, you know, the words and things like that, um, and, the, and the topics of prayer, but also the balance of content. 
Or we'll talk about the bounds and what that means. And um, we probably will not finish all of this, the content of prayer tonight, because as I was saying to Keisha and, uh, and, and whoever else was uh, already on uh, at the beginning of this, um, there's so much to say about prayer. And the, the more you think, oh, okay, that covers it. He's like, oh no, you can go even deeper into it. So I discovered that's what was happening, especially with content of prayer, because there is so much to cover. So it will be, we'll probably cover it this week and next, Lord willing. Uh, so included with content of prayer is addressing the uh, popular teaching of decreeing and declaring. How many of you have heard of heard of that people's I decree and declare I decree mm -hmm. I declare yeah mm -hmm. uh, so that is a close cousin of the positive confession um, positive confession doctrine and practice so we'll, we're going to take a close look at that as well in this sub-series content of prayer after that uh, Lord willing we'll talk about the expectations of prayer our expectations of God and what God expects from us in the context of prayer, then the promises of prayer and the power of prayer. So um, this series, I wanna reiterate, uh, is not so much about getting what we want from God. Yes, we are to uh, share our requests to God, make our requests known unto God and our, our uh, prayers of, of petition and, and supplication. But it's also about and ultimately about getting to getting closer to our heavenly father. That's, that's what I'm hoping and what my objective is in teaching it this way. How do we make our prayers count? And they're going to count the most when we make it about our personal one-on-one -on -one relationship with Lord and talking to our Abba Daddy. So and I would venture to say that prayer is just as important as reading and studying and applying God's word, if not more important, but they kind of go hand in hand. Um, prayer is extremely important. I uh, can't emphasize that enough. Um, prayer is a heart issue. I think we learned that last week or last two weeks. Um, and as a heart issue, we want our hearts to align with the heart of God, right? Um, and that will help guide how we pray. We, you know, just like in any area of our Christian walk and in, in trying to be a new creature in Christ and trying to live by his principles, his, his commands, um, his dictates, his doctrines, the, the more, the closer we get to the heart of God and align our hearts with his heart, the, the um, more that will have an impact on how we pray what we pray about, uh, what our expectations are, all of that. So um, growing in, we want to grow. We want to grow in our trust and our focus and our trust, our surrender to our Heavenly Father, um, our dependence on God. Um, and we want to grow in our expected hope. So that's, that's, again, part of what this series is about, is growing in our expected hope um, and then growing in our love, care, and service to other people, other Christians, and also, you know, other, others, non-Christians non as well. Just, just sharing, uh, exuding, sharing the love of Christ and prayer. When we pray for others, that helps that. To, that, it, that helps nurture that aspect of what God calls us to do and be for other people. And then uh, learning how to rest in God's will, resting in his will and his grace and his compassion, even when his answers to our prayers are sometimes no or wait, how can we rest in that? Um, so last, last week, as I said, we talked about attitude and posture of prayer. And uh, I combined those two because, again, uh, they're very closely related. Um, and recall, we won't turn there unless the Lord says otherwise. But right now, I'm not planning to turn there. But we looked at, um, from Luke chapter 18, the parable of the Pharisee 
and the tax collector both going into the temple to pray. And Jesus gives a contrast between these two men and, and the content, we looked at the, the contrast between the content of, of each man's prayer, um, their physical posture as they were praying and the, the end result. And we learned that the, the tax collector his, the result of his prayer is that his prayer counted with respect to touching the heart of God, and, but the Pharisee's prayer did not count. The tax collector left justified the Pharisee, who was the religion, you know, the Pharisees were the religious leaders of Jesus's day, right? His prayer did not count. Um, so we looked at, looked at that. Um, and I made the statement and I want to uh, make it again and, and write, write it down if you haven't already from last week, but an entitled heart rarely asks for mercy. The Pharisee had an entitled heart, right? God, I'm all this, I'm all that, you know, bless me because I'm not like other men. I tithe, I do this, I give, to, you know, I do that and I'm not like this tax collector over here. So, you know, so an entitled heart rarely asks for mercy. In contrast to the tax collector, he stood afar off. He wouldn't even raise his eyes to heaven. And he's like, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. He left justified the uh, thinking too highly of himself Pharisee left not justified. Um, so an entitled heart rarely asks for mercy. <clears throat> Many times in the Old Testament and the New Testament, uh, prayer is referenced in the sense of crying out. That's something else we, we mentioned last week. Um, you know, crying out to the Lord. Um, and there's so much, ladies, isn't there right now? Not uh, just, just putting our personal uh, lives and issues and fears and confusions and whatever else we may be going through individually, just look at the world. There's so much we can be crying, crying out to, to the Lord about just in, just for the things that are going on in this world. Then you add in the things we may be going through personally, individually, privately. Um, and so it's very apropos for us to, to, to see part of the posture of prayer and the attitude of prayer, this humility, of course, um, but it's crying out to our daddy, Lord, deliver, Lord, heal, Lord, help. Lord, I don't understand. Lord, give me clarity, give me directions, but crying out. Um, so there's humility of heart. There's reverence for the Lord. There's recognizing God's authority and our unworthiness. Um, and, but even in that unworthiness, we can still, he tells us to come to him. We can go to him boldly because our confidence is in him and not in ourselves. Our confidence is in the Lord. Um, and then if, in terms of physical posture, the physical posture of prayer reflects the um, heart attitude. Right. If I'm if I'm acknowledging and recognizing God's authority and my unworthiness, I'm not going to go in there like, yeah, I'm all that in a bag of chips. You know, <laughs> I'm going to be like the tax collector, you know, like barely, you know, afraid to to raise my eyes to heaven and I'm going to beat my chest. Um, but but even with that, there's no that I can see in scripture, and if anybody has a differing opinion, by all means, please uh, let me know um, based upon scripture, but there's no hard, fast rule about bowing your head, uh, cl uh, closing your eyes, clasping your hands, you know, or putting them like this, um, sounding a certain way, like talking in the King's English, right? Um, there's, there's no hard, fast rule when it comes to actual physical, what is your body, you know, supposed to look like? It's just, it's going to come naturally to some, you know, some extent naturally because of where our heart is. 
So when you when we bow, when we close our eyes, closing our eyes is just a, a physical uh, representation of our physical way of showing that we're trying to focus ourselves on the Lord and not be distracted. Bowing our heads is just uh, giving reverence as a way to give reverence. Um, those kinds of things. But we don't, as we learned last week, we don't need to close our eyes. We don't need to bow our heads. You don't need to be, you don't need to always be in, you know, a prayer closet. If you can pray in your car, don't close your eyes or bow your head in the car, right? But <laughs> God's going to certainly hear your, your prayers. Oh, hi, Shalene. I'm sorry. Didn't say hi. Hi. Good evening, everyone. Okay. Um, it's, the main point is, and we'll see this in, in just in a few minutes in Matthew 6, you can start turning there now, um, but just don't, whatever you do outwardly, don't do it for show, okay, um, because then that's, that's not focusing your heart on God, your posture, your heart's posture is all about you and being, getting attention, so um, let's, if you haven't already, let's turn to Matthew 6. And um, I'm going to read um, from the King James Version, verses 5 through 13. And then I'm going to go back and just kind of look at, the, look at each verse and, and to pull out some key points that Jesus is making. Um, so uh, starting at verse 5, if I can see. I'm sorry, I need to turn on the light here so I can read this. Hold on. Okay. 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 So, um, Matthew chapter, what did I say? Six, starting at verse five. And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in the secret place, and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathens do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them, for your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. In this manner, therefore, pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the, king yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So this, uh, like I said, examine this a little bit. So my page here. So with the attitude and posture of prayer in mind, um, I want to look at some principles related to the content of prayer. And that's our topic tonight: content of prayer. So um, based upon what Jesus is saying here in Matthew chapter six. And put a pin there and, and say what I always say is whenever you read scriptures uh, or whenever you're like in a Bible study here or anytime you're given scriptures to read on your own time, go back and read those scriptures and read them in their larger context. Um, you know, to ask yourself and even take notes, the who, what, when, where, why, and how, who's writing, who or who's, who's speaking, what are the situation, what's the situation? What, what is the surrounding circumstance that's going on? Um, who, is, who is the speaker talking to? What is his major or her, depending on what scriptures we're looking at, but what is the major um, message or point or theme? You know, those are the kinds of questions you ask. Read the scriptures of before the passage that's given to you. Read the scriptures after. It's real important to, to get a richer and wiser understanding of um, what's what I'm teaching and what anybody's teaching you. Um, and it's also a way to check out to make sure that whoever is teaching you is teaching you correctly. And if you have any questions, 
um, you know, you can say, mm, I don't, don't know if I see that. And then, then we could talk about it. Um, I'm going to call out Vivian again, because <laughs> she, uh, uh, for church last, was it last week? Not this past Sunday, but the Sunday before the, uh, our co-pastor was teaching on, on something related to one, one is Pentecostalism and he read a passage and, um, and made a comment about the passage. And then Vivian looked at it later and said, oh no, I don't think that, I don't think he was talking to that person. He was talking to those people or something to that effect. But, and how were you received Vivian? Yeah, you got you were you were you were uh, faint and you yes. were correct and but you brought it to the attention of the pastor and he yes. was corrected and, and he uh, was grateful. Yes, we all were. So um, let's not you know be intimidated. Um, let's go ahead and if we see anything that's not measuring up or if, we, if it brings up a question. Any member of a church or in, you know or a member of a Bible study attendee should be able to ask about it and, and for clarity or for to, to correct something and, the, and the, the teacher not be intimidated or offended or take it personally. Yes, Yvette, you're on mute um, and I cannot unmute you. Well, you can so move. can you holler for, okay, okay, all right. Um, maybe later when Robert, it's available to unmute you them, but, um, but hold that thought. Hope you can remember. <laughs> yeah. Um, so in Matthew chapter six, um, particularly the, what we call the Lord's prayer, starting at um, verse nine, not verses nine through 13 is, is what we call the Lord's prayer. Jesus is giving an outline or a template for prayer. Um, this passage is not intended for to be the prayer that you recite every time you want to sit down and pray. If the Lord, you know, the Holy Spirit leads you to pray that way, it's not like it's, oh, you're wrong and God's not going to hear you. It's just a template. No, it's, but it is more of a guideline. It's intended more of a guideline. Um, so with that guideline in mind, let's take a look at some key, some key principles and, and key words. So uh, first of all, when we pray, like how to make our prayers count. What's the content of our prayer? That's what we're trying to answer, right? First of all, don't be hypocritical. You see that in verse five. Um, sorry. Um, well, yes, verse five. Um, actually, I'm looking, I am going to look um, throughout, basically from five to 13 and pull out the principles from there. I'm sorry. I, I misread my notes for a moment, but we're looking at pulling out the principles from verses five all, uh, all the way through 13. Don't be hypocritical. Um, number two, don't do it publicly for show. That's also in verse five. Um, it says here, this is real key in, in that, but regarding uh, don't do it publicly for show, Anything that we if, that we do it for the um, how can I say this? Anything that we do that we think we're doing for the, in the name of Christ, if our heart attitude and our heart posture is really to you know to um, is really hypocritical or it's for show to get attention to get accolades from men, we have our reward. That's our reward. Is attention for men and how and men, I mean humankind and <laughs> males exclusively. Um, that's our reward. That's all that that prayer is going to count for. And how fleeting is that, right? How fleeting is that um, when when our prayers? Okay, okay, we got the attention, and then, what is it going to satisfy us? How long is that going to last? But we have our reward if we're doing anything in the name of the Lord, but really doing it in the name of ourselves to get attention. Uh, number three, pray in the secret place. Verse, that's in verse six. Um, what does it say? Can't see. Oh, it says, 
But you, when you pray, go into your room and when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in the secret place and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. So first there's that contrast about what, what kind of reward you're going to get, okay? Well, I'd rather get a reward from God than, than a reward from a temporary reward from fellow mankind. But the secret place, it doesn't mean that you can't, that you, it doesn't mean that you cannot pray in public. You, you know, obviously we can pray in public. You know, people, Christians do it all the time. It's, and it's, and as, again, as long as you're not doing it for show, but that's, you know, and God knows if you're doing it for show, if you're praying in public. Um, it also doesn't mean that you can only pray in your room or a prayer closet. I mentioned it already, you can pray in your car, you can, you know, we, we pray over our food in the restaurants. Um, we pray together on Zoom or in church or Bible studies or whatever, um, uh, and even spontaneously. So God's not, God's not hung up on the mechanics of prayer. He's not hung up on the location of prayer. It's really, again, can't say it enough, it's about the heart of your prayer. That's what makes your prayers count. So, but if you do, I mean, it still says here, go to secret place. You know, sometimes it, it, it does take just isolating yourself, literally, you know, physically isolating yourself out from the world, from, from other people, even people in your household where you need that time, just talking to your Abba Daddy, because that's your personal relationship with him. And just crying out, um, just take you know time to just pray to him in, with words of, of praise and, and worship. Um, you know, when we talk about contrition or confession, you certainly don't want to be out in public talking about you know all your sins unless <laughs> you know um, you're you're led to, and even then you have to you know be wise about that. Um, but that's what it is. It reinforces the personal intimacy. When we talk about the secret place, it reinforces the personal intimacy with your heavenly father who sees in secret. Um, and it reinforces also your, your focus on God when you're not distracted. God will reward you. Um, it helps your, to make your prayers count. Don't be hypocritical. Don't do it for show. If you do it with the right heart attitude um, and, and you talk to God in, in secret, because even if you're in public, you don't, you know, you don't want to, um, if you're, depending on the circumstances, be in a place, you know, sometimes we, we whisper our prayers or we, we I, this is what I do sometimes when I'm not alone, but I don't want others to hear what I'm praying, I'll, you know, I'll uh, just say them silently to myself, you know, uh, and other people around me may not even know that I'm praying. That's still doing it kind of like in a metaphorically in a secret place because other people aren't aware that I'm praying or what I'm praying about. Um, the content of prayer, um, looking at that in verse seven, it says, and when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathens do, because they think that they will be heard for their many words. Vain uh, mean vain repetitions is empty repetitions. So it's it's don't repeat empty words. Oh Father, oh Father, oh Father. Well, that's not empty. If that's how the Lord is leading you to pray, if the Holy Spirit is moving you to pray that way, and you're and you know maybe you're uttering things, you're struggling to, to pull the words together, you know, um, but just be aware that a lot of people don't like dead air. So they, and they don't know how to formulate the words, but they'll start putting in words that really, you know, the, the more you repeat them, the less effect they may have. So I know sometimes, you know, people, um, and I may do this too, you know, we'll say, Lord, and then, oh, Father, and then for the next, oh, Father, and then, oh, Father, you know, um, but that's, that's, it's just be aware um, that 
make sure you're, you're not just using empty words just to fill in space in your prayer time. Does that make sense? All right. Um, and again, it's the posture of the heart. Sometimes we repeat because we're crying out. Uh, but sometimes we repeat, like I said, because we're trying to fill up dead air. And that's that just makes it empty. It takes the focus, thoughtless words, Shalene. Thank you, yes. Um, yes, thanks. God doesn't hear us based on how many words we use, but on our heart posture. God is more interested in, uh, I love this. God is more interested in the content of our hearts and not the eloquence of our words. I got that from an article in gotquestions.org. Um, that I encourage everyone to, you know, use as a great Bible study tool, gotquestions.org. Um, and they have several articles about prayer that, you know, if you want to dig deeper, you can look into them. But absolutely, God is more interested in the content of our hearts and not the eloquence of our words. So keep that in mind. Um, sometimes and I still, this still happens to me. I get, you know, intimidated about when somebody asks me to pray, like, especially in a group, um, because I'm like, oh my gosh, what, you know, I don't know what to say. I don't know, the, am I going to make sense? You know, it's just like, no, just let the Holy Spirit lead you. That doesn't mean, you, you know, you turn off your brain because a lot of people <laughs> turn off their brains. I'm saying it, tell the truth of Jane the devil. Um, a lot of people just think, oh, I'm just supposed to just, just let loose. No, we are to remain sober, sound-minded, even in our prayer. But we, we know that the Holy Spirit helps us when we pray. And he gives us words to say. Um, and so we, we, it's really relying on the Lord and not ourselves. Um, so even if we stumble over our words in prayer, if the heart is in the right place, and if the listeners and the, those praying with you, if their hearts are in the right place, then it's going to have the effect that the Holy Spirit desires for that moment in that time for those prayers. Um, and besides, as verse eight tells us, God knows what we have need of before we even ask him. He's omniscient, he's all knowing. So he knows what we're gonna pray for even before we ask him. So we don't need those empty words, we don't need to struggle really to find words like struggle, struggle. Um, like if we don't find the right words and the prayers null and void, no, God knows, he knows. He's not looking for anything but a contrite heart. Um, so he, and he, being on mission, he knows because he knows. So why do we pray then? If God knows what we're gonna pray to him about, why should we pray anyway? Anybody want to contribute an answer to that? I know you know, Vivian. <laughs> we, we did the first, uh, the first installment of this series. We're talking about the purposes of prayer, right? We pray, and one of the purposes is to obey. He tells us. <laughs> See, he tells us to ask. Another purpose is, as, we've, as I've been trying to emphasize, is uh, it brings us closer. It's just our way of talking to God. He knows what we're going to pray for. We don't know what, he, what he's going to answer and how he's going to answer it. We just, it's just our way of just communicating with him since, we, since he's not here. Like, you know, he's not on Zoom. We can't see him. He's not sitting that with us in our secret place. Um, but he tells us to, and it's a way to uh, just keep nurturing our personal intimate relationship with him. Um, and he, but he doesn't need us. He, he, he tells us to pray and ask, not because he needs us, but because we need him. And in our, in our finite hearts and minds, talking to him brings us closer to him, right? Um, and then I mentioned this, the, the uh, verses 9 through 13, again, um, that's just a template. Jesus is saying, the, here's a guideline, a template. Um, so let's, let's take a look at the Lord's Prayer here. 
I'm going to read it again. Uh, in this manner, therefore, pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen and amen. Um, so let's take a look. So praise and worship. So some of the content of prayer, uh, elements of, of prayer is praise and worship, right? Acknowledging God's divinity, his authority, his holiness, and his worthiness. That we see all of that in verse 9. Um, and then in verse 10, we're acknowledging his kingship and Christ's imminent return. Um, then in verse, also in verse 10, we're seeking God's will in this life, including in our situation that we want to pray for. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Um, that's really key, uh, praying that praying in a, according to God's will. We'll see that um, as we continue on. Uh, verse 11, give us this day our daily bread. This is make your requests known, your petitions and your supplications. Supplications are, are requests, but they're, but they're um, a little more, I don't want to say intense, but they're a little more fervent. They're, you know, it's like really entreating God for something you really need or you really want him to, uh, to answer. Um, so make your request known. And then uh, verse 12, forgive, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Um, this is, if you remember from last week, we, we looked at ACTS, A-C-T-S, the, the four basic um, types of prayer, and the C stands for contrition or confession. Um, so when we pray, part of that template, part of the guideline that Jesus is teaching us is, you know, be contrite, be humble, ask for mercy, ask for God's compassion, ask for his forgiveness for your sins or your the infractions that you may have committed since the last time you prayed and asked him. So definitely want to include that. Um, and it's also showing your, uh, verse 12 is also a reinforcing that we should be willing to forgive other people. And we know there are other scriptures that talk about if we if we want God to forgive us, we need to we need to forgive other people. Be willing to forgive other people. Um, then, uh, petition for help, um, protection, salvation from temptation and sin, uh, protection from the evil one. That's we see that in verse thirteen. So we we want at, we're acknowledging our sins, but we're also asking God, you know, protect us from the evil one. Um, some sins are self and, you know, some temptations, I sh should say, are, are just can happen um, because we have an enemy that's, that's always trying to trip us up and, and have us commit sin. But sometimes they're just kind of self-induced, you know, because um, we're not, we're, we're operating off of carnality or, you know, selfishness or pride uh, instead of really keeping our focus on the Lord and, and seeking his protection, his wisdom to uh, um, get through, you know, when the, when the devil sends his uh, arrows. And then uh, also, and lastly, um, in this verse, in verse 13, uh, it's once again, acknowledging the Lord's everlasting kingship, um, his power, his authority, his glory, um, and it's also a way because we're we're giving him praise and worship. It's also a way uh, to show our submissive heart to God and to His will. So that's like a running theme through this: our submission to the Lord, to um, His authority and His will. Um, and then I want to just want to give a, a quick word about saying Amen. 
Um, it's just a way as I don't, I don't see anywhere in scripture and correct me if I'm wrong, maybe in the old Testament where we're, you know, prayer must include saying amen at the end. Um, I did not do any research on where that comes from specifically, um, but we do know that um, uh, it's just a way of, you know, signaling the end of the prayer. Um, you know, just, and it means, amen means so be it. It's translated in, into English, so be it. It's like, it's not a name and claim it kind of thing. You know, it's just like, again, we're praying according to God's will, but it's like, let it be, so be it. That's just a, a signal, signaling that that's the end of, of the request, the petition, the prayer. Um, and, and then I want to add one more thing that's not in this uh, Lord's Prayer, but we definitely see in Philippians 4, 6. Uh, let's turn there. Philippians 4, 6, and um, we'll see, uh, it's, it's not like it's, it's missing from the Lord's Prayer, it's just not, um, it's definitely uh, implied in the Lord's Prayer, but here it says it explicitly in, in Philippians 4, 6, which says in the New King James Version, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, and here's the key, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Okay, so thanksgiving is definitely um, part of that template of, of how uh, the content of our prayers. Um, and a couple more things I wanted to mention on that. Um, we are to, let's turn, I'm going to turn to two more scriptures, uh, uh, John 14, let's turn there, John 14, 13 and 14, but the point is to ask in the Lord's name. We're been thinking about content of prayer, we are to ask in Jesus's name. Let me get there as quickly as I can, ask, excuse me, John. 14 verses 13 and 14. Bible has a lot of commentary. <laughs> okay, uh, it says, oh, sorry. John 14 verse 13 and 14 say, At, and whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, he repeats it. I will do it, okay? We're gonna qualify that when we talk about decreeing and declaring a positive confession um, as, as uh, we get into this subject. Um, but the point here is, if you ask anything in whose name? Jesus's name. And so that's why um, we should include in, in the content of prayer, as far as what words we use, in Jesus name, in Jesus name, I pray. In Jesus name, please, you know, do such and such. In Jesus name, please heal, please, you know. Um, and then the other scripture I wanted to look at, John chapter five, verses 14 and 15. John five, 14 and 15 say, uh, let me make sure that's where I want to be. Oh, no, that's not. Um, I do apologize for that. I, I wrote down the wrong scripture, but it's basically about praying in God's will. Praying if it be your will. Praying God's will. If you know that something is God's will, like salvation of a loved one, you know, um, so as an example. Um, and then lastly, the, what I want to talk about um, tonight um, is the balance of content. So the acronym ACTS, A-C-T-S, the A stands for adoration. The C stands for, as I mentioned, contrition, contrition or confession. The T stands for thankfulness. 
and the S stands for supplication. So that's just a way, it's just a man-made way of kind of looking at, uh, and we talked about this and in, in, in when we talked about the purposes of prayer and last week as well. Um, it, the, this acronym is just, it's just uh, kind of categorizing all the different ways that we can pray, all the different types or themes or content of our prayer. So the question with, with balance is, are we praying balanced prayers? Now, you don't have to necessarily, every single time you pray, have to include all the elements that we went through uh, from Matthew 6, verses 5 through 13. Um, you don't, it doesn't have to include all of those things. It doesn't have to necessarily include adoration, contrition, thankfulness, um, and supplication. Um, so it's really not, okay, each prayer has to include that because when we pray over, we're praying, thanking God for, for our food, right? When we're thanking him for our food, he's not going to say, well, no, you didn't, you know, have included so words of adoration and you didn't confess your sin at the dinner table and you didn't, you know, he's not expecting that. So when we talk about balance, it's really each of us turning our eyeballs inward and, and examining ourselves are we, um, when we think about how we pray or how often we pray, what are we praying about? What types of prayers? Is it always about getting our requests? Is that what you pray about most, most of the time, all the time? Do you, when you pray, remember that it's, it's not just, prayer is just talking to God, communicating with the Lord, you to him. Um, and so if we see it kind of like as a conversation, um, in that sense, is, does it necessarily need to have all of those elements? The answer is no, obviously, but it's balance. Is it when you go to God, hopefully everybody, you know, we, and this is where I'm convicted, but, but we said it because prayer, as I said early on, is so important. It's such a, such a crucial, essential part of our Christian life, um, then we should be making time for it. We should be purposefully, deliberately, consciously, you know, setting aside time every day, prayer time in our lives. Um, it could be at night, it could be in the morning, it could be on your commute to work, um, whatever, you know, whatever, it, whatever works for you. But in that time, are, you know, think about balance. Now, sometimes prayer can be spontaneous. So it's not taking out the possibility of spontaneous prayer. It's like, okay, just like uh, Yvette wasn't feeling well, was not feeling well. Um, you know, we, and it's like, okay, spontaneous prayer, let's pray for Yvette. Um, but it's really about the balance of the heart. Am I asking, and when I pray to God, am I usually praying for him to, to, to give me something that I need or that I want? Um, obviously, again, it's not like we can't ask for things. We're told to, right? We've seen that already in the series over and over again. But um, are we also making time to pray just to worship him, just to, just to thank him? Um, just to acknowledge how awesome he is and how loving and compassionate, um, how worthy he is. Um, are we, you know, avoiding praying for forgiveness for our sins that we may have committed since the last time? So that, that's what I mean by balance of content, just in your overarching uh, prayer life, just make sure that there's balance among uh, when we look at the template of the Lord's Prayer, do are we you know, are we uh, balanced in how in um, the quality and more so than the quantity, but the quality of praying for everything that that Jesus has given us a guideline to pray for. Um, and let's see, I said that I said that, um, and I said that. Okay. <laughs> Uh, last few minutes.
um, I want to make sure that we know that when it comes to prayer, praying to God as Christians, there is really no, there's no magic formula to prayer. It's not like, okay, do this and you will be guaranteed to get the answer that you want. You got to do it this way. You got to have this much faith. You got to say these words. You know, you can't you can't say it this way. You got to say it that way. Um, the only rules, and this isn't you know a magic formula, but you know again, just to repeat: be humble, be reverent, be confident in the Lord and not yourself. Um, be open and honest with the Lord as, as you're praying and talking to Him. Uh, pray in Jesus' name, trust and believe that God hears you. I mean, those are the major guidelines for the content of our prayers. It's, it's the heart attitude, um, and your words will come from that. So there is no magic formula. And based on that fact, anybody that wants to teach you how to pray and charge you for it, Freely you have received, freely give, Jesus says. Um, I just shared lessons on how to pray, posture and content. But there's no magic formula. I, you notice that I never said, oh, you know, you're going to get what you, what you asked for. Well, Jesus said it in John 14, we just read. But even then, we have to look at everything in context. There is no magic formula. And, but there are plenty of people that will tell you, go to their prayer institute and pay $1,500. And you will, in, in for only 120 people. And those 120 people are going to be better at getting their prayers answered than you and me? No, it does not work like that. There is no magic formula. Um, and so... Lord willing, next week, that's, that's, you know, speaking of magic formulas, uh, we're going to talk about positive confession and decreeing and declaring and uh, why they are uh, these doctrines and the practices are uh, unbiblical. And I I'm not here to pick on anything or, you know, why can't we all just get along? Well, we all can get along as long as we're unified in the truth of the gospel and unified in the truth of God's word um, and everything that it, that it says. So we're, gonna, we're going to uh, talk about that. We'll write this word down, abracadabra, abracadabra. You know how to spell it? <laughs> I had to have my dictionary open. It's A-B-R-A-C-A-D-A-B-R-A. -A -A -A. Pretty much like it sounds, abracadabra. <laughs> um, and the, it, the definition is very interesting. I looked it up and looked up the, the history of the word and where it comes from. And it's very interesting. And I'm not going to tell you until next week. <laughs> but that, obviously, you can look it up yourself. Um, and, we'll, and so we'll look at the, that, what that means. And we'll look at scriptures that are, that are used, just a, the major scriptures that are used to defend positive confession and decreeing and declaring for Christians. Um, and we'll show how they are taken out of context and leading people astray. And, it's, and why it's dangerous. And that's why I would take the time to call out what's wrong with uh, some of the, the major teaching in, in Christian circles, because it leads people astray and they get disenchanted, disappointed, disenchanted, and then they start getting mad at God um, instead of just opening their Bibles and saying, no, what we were taught, that's not right. But we can, we're going to look at scriptures and see how they're taken um, out of context and tell and, and examine what the real context is so that we, our prayer life will be strengthened by the truth. So our prayers can really count. All right, ladies, any questions? I'm here for another, up to another hour. If you have, want to talk about this or any topic, um, I hope I didn't go too fast or too slow. 
Any questions, comments? If you need to drop off, uh, feel free. Just that you were on the right John. It was the first John five. First John five. Can you, do you have it? Thank you, Vivian. Do you, can you read it for us? John five. First John five. I, I neglected to write down that, that numeral one. John five, uh, 14. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us, whatever, whatever we ask, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desire of him. So the key is, it's not a formula, but the key is whatever we ask according to his will, he hears us. Okay. Bye, Marcy. Bye-bye. Bye, ladies. Have a good night. You too. Have a good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Bye. Yeah. Um, hey, Toretta. You, you can hear us, right? We can't hear you. You're on mute. Bye, Yvette. Uh, so Loretta, how are you doing? Honey? I'm sorry. I'm here. You can, I was trying to walk uh, Taylor, I mean, Tyler out. Oh, no worries. No worries. Did, were you able to do that? Do you still need to do that? Finish doing no. that? No, I'm done. I'm done. But okay. yeah. Okay. Well, good night. Good night. Are you guys uh, going to continue? I mean, I'm, you know, I'm here. If you uh, have any topics that you want to talk about, I'm, I'm happy to stay on, as you know. No, I don't have anything. Okay. Have anything. All right. Well, have a good night. You guys have a, or you ladies have a great rest of your week. Thanks. You too. Bye. Okay, bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Loretta, you doing well? I'm doing good. Thank you. How are you good. doing?